Okay. So trick functions and how they're defined and sort of where some of it comes from. Um, so the six ratios you can form with the sides of the right triangle each have their own specific name. Right. So you guys already know about sines and cosines and tangents and then the reciprocals of that. So let's see, the sine, if you struggle with this a little bit, so this S stands for sine, O is for opposite, right? H would be for hypotenuse. So if you need a little you know, memory aid, SOHCAHTOA would really help in that. So we're looking at this from angle A. So from angles A, the sine would be opposite. That would be A divided by your hypotenuse. So in this triangle, it would be A over C. Your cosine is going to be, so the cosine, the C stands for cosine, the A stands for adjacent, so the adjacent side to A would be B. The hypotenuse is still C. And the T stands for the tangent, which is formed by doing the opposite divided by the adjacent. So the tangent in this case would be A over B. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is always the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. And then we have the reciprocal of these. Um, and I sometimes misname these as well. So this is not an inverse, this is a reciprocal. And a reciprocal literally means that you flip it. Okay, now try to line them up. So the sine and the cosecant are somehow related. So the sine and the cosecant are related. So if you flip A over C, then this will be C over A. So the cosecant, which is usually abbreviated with CSC, <coughs> the cosecant is the hypotenuse divided <coughs> by the opposite side. So the secant is related to the cosine. So the secant will be C over B, which is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. And then the cotangent is what you get when you flip your tangent. So it's B over A. So that would be the adjacent side divided by the opposite side. Okay. Um, most of you guys have very little trouble doing this with tangent and cotangent. So this is how I have it sort of memorized. The reciprocal means it's sort of backwards, so the cosine doesn't belong to the cosecant. The cosine would belong to the secant because the C and the S flip as well. Okay, so flipping things to C, flipping it, the cosine would give you the one that starts with an S. So the cosine and the secant go together. The sine, when I flip it, I need to start with the C, so the sine is going to have to go with the cosecant. Hopefully that makes sense a little bit, because sometimes um, it takes a little while to figure out which one goes with what. Okay, so that's how I sort of keep um, keep them separated. Okay, so let's look at a triangle and then just write down what these are. And then there's one other thing that, uh, two other things I think that we should definitely look at. So angle A, so looking from angle A, the sine would be what? The sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So the sine is? 3 over 5. Good. The cosine would be adjacent divided by hypotenuse, so that would be 4 over 5. And then opposite over adjacent. And you don't have to write the abbreviations, I'm just doing it to be complete, I guess. So 3 over 4. So which one does the cosecant go with? When you flip it, the S becomes a C, right? So the cosecant is going to be 5 over 3. So the secant, that would be when you have flipped the cosine. Well, we have a cosine. The cosine was 4 over 5, so that one would be 5 over 4. And the cotangent, well, the tangent was 3 over 4, so just flip it, and you get 4 over 3. Are we okay with this? All right. So. Looking at angle B, you'll notice that the values do change a little bit. The sine of B is actually not 3 over 5, it's 4 over 5. And now the cosine is 3 over 5. And the tangent becomes 4 over 3. So the 
cosecant for B would be 5 over 4. And then this should be a secant. There's a typo, apparently. The secant for B would be 5 over 3. And the cotangent would be 3 over 4. Okay. Um, do you think it's important that we keep units in mind when we do this? So does the sign of the angle change if this was done in meters first? So we're going to do it in meters first and then now we're going to do this in feet. Does the sign change at all? The value of the sign. So I'm asking you this. Is the sign of A, is it different if I use meters? 3 over 5 meters. Or feet. Does it matter? Yes, no. Anybody? No. No, I don't think so either, because what is a meter divided by a meter? Don't these cancel each other? Yeah. And wouldn't the feet cancel with feet? So we just get 3 over 5? Now you might be wondering why do I spend any time on this. It means the following. It means that the sine of an angle does not really depend on the length right it depends on the actual angle does that make sense because three meters is definitely different than three feet so what I basically created here was those triangles that are similar so in similar triangles the sign will have the same value so if you have a triangle that's three meters four meters by five meters well that's a different size than if it was in feet feet's less than a meter so the, si the triangles aren't congruent they're not exactly identical but the sign will be exactly the same value because it's the ratio of the sides that, that determines it. Okay? <coughs> All right, then the other thing is what do you notice about the values in the table? Well, there are a lot of things you can notice. What do you guys notice? Some of the things you might notice are what? What did you say? Right, so that's the relationship that we, you know, the reciprocal. So, yes, these are the reciprocals. Right? Okay, what else? <coughs> Here's something that I notice about n sines and cosines. 3 over 5, 4 over 5, 4 over 5, and 3 over 5 are all less than? They're all less than? 3 over 5 and 4 over 5, they're all less than 1. Is it? Is it? Are we ever going to get a sine larger than 1? No. That's impossible, right? Because remember, we just established in the previous assignment that the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So if you're dividing by the hypotenuse, your sine and cosine will always be less than 1. Yes? So your sine and cosine will always be less than 1. Okay? Now, your tangent and cotangent don't really follow that rule. Like, the tangent here, yes, it's less than 1. It's 3 over 4. But on the next one, when you looked at B, the tangent was 4 over 3. So it's more than 1. So that doesn't work for the tangent. And, and because of that, it also doesn't work for the cotangent. Because flipping something that's more than 1 makes it less than 1 and vice versa. So we, we don't have that for those. Um, because the sine and the cosine will always be less than 1, what do you then know about the cosecant, which is that one flipped, and the cosine, which is the secant? What will they always be? always greater than 1. Does that okay with you guys? Does that make sense? Okay, so this has something to do with the range of the sine and the cosine, right? And that's for down the line. It's not for this chapter. That's quite a ways before we get back to that. But it, it sort of comes from this, okay? Um, and then there's one other thing. I don't know if you've ever worried, wondered about it, but okay, so sine and cosine you see the word sine is in cosine okay the way that they created these these names is that the cosine is actually the co-function of the sine what I mean with that is this if you look at the value of the sine of a if the sine of a is 3 over 5 then the cosine of B will be exactly the same value because they're, what are A and B in a right triangle? They are 
complementary? Yes? Well, that's, that's the reason these functions are called cofunctions. Um, the book does a little better job of explaining that. It doesn't help us a lot in problems, but it's a neat relationship to see, and it helps to maybe sort out a little bit why do we call it sine and cosine? Why aren't those sort of connected? Well, well, they are connected. If you take the sine of something that's 60 degrees, you'll get the same value as if you took the cosine of something of... How much more do I need to get to 90 from 60? 30. 30. So the sine of 60 is the cosine of 30. Or the sine of 82 is the cosine of 8. Okay? All right. Um... Last part then, so how in the world do I find all the trick functions if you are just given this, the sine of A is 2 over 3? How do you know any of the other ones based on this? So you go back to your, sort of your definition, the sine is the ratio of which two sides? It's the opposite divided by the, well draw a triangle, because we know we're dealing with right triangles here, right? So let's call this A. We know that the opposite side is? Little a. And it's actually worth 2, right? And the hypotenuse is worth? 3. three. And I drew a horrible triangle, so I'm going to redraw my triangle because there's no way that if that's 2, then that bottom would be 3. Let's try that again. So the hypotenuse is 3, so that looks, it's got to be a little bit more than that. So we're here. Now, how can I find the cosine of this? What is the cosine of A? supposed to be, yeah, we need to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find this value so we can plug it in over here. Okay, so we need to find the adjacent side here. So the adjacent side would be, and we'll just, can I call it an x in this case? So I don't have to write adjacent. So it's 2 squared plus x squared is 3 squared. Make sure you square stuff, right? So x squared will be 9 minus 4 so x is the square root of, 9 minus 4 is? 5. 5. So we get the square root of 5 for x, for the adjacent side. So it's the square root of 5 divided by 3. Yeah? And that makes the tangent of a equal to what? The tangent of a is? 2 over the square root of 5. We're okay with that? And then let's flip them. So I'm just going to flip this. If I flip the signs, if I make that 3 over 2, which one did I end up with? That's actually the cosecant of A, isn't it? When you flip it, you've got to use the other letter first. So the sine becomes a cosecant. So the cosine becomes a secant. So the secant of A is just 3 over the square root of 5. And then the tangent and the cotangent belong together. So the cotangent is the square root of 5 over 2. Are we okay with this? Everybody see how you can get it based on the first one? Because you know you're in a right triangle, so you can find out the missing side and find all six of them based on just having one. So it works the same way here, except this is now adjacent, right? And then that's your hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is the square root of 5. So if that's the square root of 5, then that could be 4. Square root of 5 is somewhere around 2, so that's 4. So that's a horrible triangle, but okay. So if that's 4, how do you find this side over here? Well, the same way, right? And when you do enough of these, you'll get the hang that... <coughs> so x squared will be 4 squared minus the square root of 5 squared, so we can skip a couple of steps here. So x squared is... What's the square root of 5 squared? Five. Just 5. So x will be the square root of 11. Are we okay with that? So flipping the cosine is going to give me what? So flipping the cosine, you don't want to use the c, you want to use the secant, right? Yes? All right, and then here I can do the sine of a. The sine of a would be opposite, which was the square root of 11 divided by 4. So when I flip that and make it into 4 over the square root of 11, then that's actually the cosecant of a. And then the tangent of a would be opposite, which is the square root of 11 divided by adjacent, the square root of 5. 
and flipping that will give you the cotangent. Okay, and you do not have to rationalize. Uh, I do need to flip it though. That's the square root of five. You do not have to rationalize any of this. So what I mean is that I'm okay with you leaving a square root of five in the bottom here. If you wanted to multiply it out and write it like this, that would be fine if you did. But to me, that's sort of wasted time. Okay, this isn't obviously an accepted answer. It's probably a better answer, but I'm not interested in that part of the problem. I just want to make sure we can do the actual math in this case, or finding the trig functions. Okay.